exercises, we're going to go on now to exercise 2.3. And this will get us through learning objective number 3. And we are on page 50. So let's read the question, see what we're up against. Constructing an income statement. Well, that's not so bad. Home Entertainment. A retailer of CDs and DVDs provided the following information for the month of June. And you can look down there and you can see sales, selling expense, admin expense, and then some inventory stuff. <clears throat> Required. Prepare an income statement for the company for the month. So we'll put our title down so that we know what we're doing. Income statement. You always begin with your title. I'm not going to put anything more. But what's our first line of any income statement? Income. Right? We're told that we have sales of $150,000. Typically, the next step would be to subtract the cost of goods sold. But we don't have that number. We have to get that number. So, we're going to subtract cost of goods sold, but we've got to figure it out. Well, this is our beer problem again, isn't it? We will start with our inventory, beginning balance. And our beginning balance on inventory, we're told, is 12000 So we'll put 12000 here. Whenever we're doing sub-calculations, we don't want to continue on on the same line. We kind of indent it a bit, and then once we get the number we want, we'll extend it out. So there's our inventory beginning balance. To that, we will add, what do we add? Right, our purchases. And we're told that our purchases were 90000 So, again, our beer problem. This means we have available for sale, available for sale, $102,000 worth of inventory. But we didn't sell $102,000 worth of inventory because we have an ending balance. So to figure out what our cost of goods are, we will subtract our ending inventory, which we're told is beginning balance was 12, ending balance is 22. So we'll subtract 22,000 off of that. That'll give us 80,000. And that 80,000 we can extend out to here. That is our cost of goods sold. Again, let's, let's just walk through it. If we start with $12,000 of inventory and we purchase 90, that means we must have had available $102,000 of inventory. But if we have $22,000 of it left, that means we must have used up 80. So our cost of goods sold is 80,000. That gives us a number called a gross margin. That's our gross margin. And 80, 150 minus 80 leaves 70,000 as our gross margin. From that, we will deduct our selling and our admin expenses. And we're told that our selling expense is 40,000. We'll put that in here. And we're told that our admin expense is 25,000. So that makes 65,000. And 70 minus 65,000 leaves us with 5,000. And we'll put a double line under that. And we call that net income. And that is our income statement. Now, it would typically be easy to do if we had a number for cost of goods sold. But we don't have a number for cost of goods sold. So we have to calculate it. But we've, we've seen this before. We've already done this kind of, an, uh, this kind of uh, calculation before in working our way through raw materials, finished goods, inventory, work in process, etc. So this is nothing new, right? Exercise 2.4. This is learning objective number four. We're working our way through them nicely. And we are still on page 50. So let's see what we're up against here. Prepare a schedule of cost of goods manufactured. Okay, well, remember now uh, what this, where the schedule of cost of goods manufactured is. Our raw materials inventory, uh, we have purchases that flow into raw materials, raw materials flow into work in process, and work in process flows into finished goods inventory. This right here is our cost of goods manufactured. So we have to work our way through purchases, through raw materials, through work in process, and the number that comes out is cost of goods manufactured. So Acromold Fabrication manufactures a variety of products in its factory. Data for the most recent month's operations appear below. We have 
inventory numbers, manufacturing overhead, direct labor, work in pro. So we got a lot here. So prepare a, a schedule of cost of goods manufactured for the company for the month. So, well, here's how we start. Remember, we start with our raw materials inventory. So let's, uh, let's find a nice uh, color to use. Here we go. We'll start with our raw materials inventory, our beginning balance. What do we start with? Are we told what that is? Beginning raw materials inventory, we have 66000 So we'll put our $66,000 down. We add to that. What do we add? There's one arrow in, so that means we add our purchases. And let's add our purchases. Are we told what that is? Purchases of raw materials, 528000 528. So that means our raw materials available, this is what we had available between what we started with and, and, uh, and, and what we purchased. We had 594000 right? 6 and 8 is 4. That's 6 and 9 and 5. There you go. Add it up. Less what we have left. Our raw materials inventory ending balance. And are we told that? Yes, we are. It's 78000 so if we take 78000 off of that, we should get $516,000. So this is raw material used. It was $516,000. Great. So that's step one. Step two is we have to, raw materials, notice raw materials goes into work in process. Well, what else goes into work in process? Direct labor goes into work in process and manufacturing overhead. We still got to get the cost of goods manufactured, right? So what do we do? Work in process. Beginning balance. What's our beginning balance of work in process? Are we told? Beginning work in process inventory, 228000 To that, we add. What do we add? Notice there are three arrows going in. So the first thing we add are raw materials used. How much was that? We already figured it out up here. So all we have to do is just bring it down, 516. We'll add direct labor. Where's our direct labor? 258. And what's our last one? Manufacturing overhead. And how much is manufacturing overhead? 456,000. So we draw a line under this and we add up all three of these numbers. And I've already gone ahead and done it, but uh, if you do it yourself, you should get one million four hundred and fifty-eight thousand. So this is what we have available. Don't get confused between raw materials and, and work in process and what we're doing. Remember, all we're doing is we're adding the arrows in. For raw materials, there's only one arrow to add. It's purchases. But for work in process, we have one, two, three arrows coming in. So we have to add up one, two three amounts. That's why I said we'd add the three. So we have 1,458,000 available. But we didn't use all of that. We have some work in process ending inventory. So we'll subtract that because we didn't use that. We're told it's 264,000. And that should give us, when we're done, 1,194,000 What's this number? This is cost of goods manufactured. It's this number right here. What leaves work in process is this. This enters finished goods inventory now. That is the schedule of cost of goods manufactured. We stop as soon as it leaves work in process that we know how much it cost us to manufacture those goods.